Today we're going to be looking at 3D models. We're going to be looking at models on Windows in their 3D viewer, the models in PowerPoint, and also some models on the web. Now you may ask, how do we get started with all this 3D stuff? Well, it actually started from 2D. Back when I was taking wood shop many years ago, we had to draw objects in a plan view, a top view, and an elevation view. And for this, this is pretty simplistic until you started adding things to different ends or sides of the object. So from the front, you really couldn't see what was behind it, but from the top view, you could, and then the elevation. And that's how we got from two-dimensional to three-dimensional. We're going to start rotating these drawings to see what's on the back side, the underside, top side. Just to give you a, a few points, some people with epilepsy or autism may find 3D objects uh, troublesome, so be aware of your audience. However, 3D backgrounds, 3D objects, and I'll use those interchangeably, are fun, fancy, and artistic. And we always want to show our artistic uh, potential in PowerPoint. We're going to talk about some places you can get some free models and or, or even buy some. We're going to talk about a real estate 3D model. And the Mac has a lot of 3D models in their system also. And just like any other entity, whether it's fonts or boating or animation or transitions, too much is too much and enough is just right. So use a restraint. So who can tell me what this object is that I've drawn real quickly and crudely? It's a popsicle stick. It's supposed to come up. You can see the top, you can see the elevation view or the end, and you can see the side or the, the plan. Okay. So from Windows, you could just go to 3D objects in your Explorer um, program, and you'll come up with all these different types of objects that you could play around with. I've picked the pyramid. It was the one I picked. As we move on, you can also go to the Windows uh, menu and go to 3D Viewer as shown here and you'll come up with 12 different groups and I counted a total of 514 different uh, models within these groups a lot of things to play with and get better with you never know when you might need to know how to use a 3d model for some project you're working on or some group this is one of the models that came over I, I was able to export it from windows into powerpoint this is just a slide so we'll get back into this and show you how you can manipulate the object and rotate it and make it spin and do different things oh there's a little bit there the file extensions from objects or from Windows are typically the, the GLB, which I don't even see right offhand. Oh, the very last one. That's the one that <clears throat> the Windows objects brought over. But as you can see, you can have a multitude of different extensions. And then if you go to, to PowerPoint, and we'll go over this menu in just a moment. You go to 3D models, it comes up with 57 different stock model groups. So each one of these is a group. So a lot of different things you can work on. Work on your math symbols, work on your astronauts, your computers, just different plumbing, just different little things. Shoes for the women, vacation chairs, summer reclining chairs. Now, this is one of the items that I brought over from PowerPoints 
groups. It's just a house. And this was a real nice one I brought over for the 3D viewers, a heart. We'll go back and try to find it and show you what that looks like. Here are some sites that I found on the web that you can look at and play around with. The fifth one, I did play around with some Matterhorn when I was out of town. It's a real estate 3D program. I could not find a way to export the data, but it was neat using your phone to do a 3D image or a 3D model of the room you're in. They can do measurements. Uh, of course, you can rotate, uh, revolve, tilt, all those different things with, with any 3D model that we're going to go over. So play around with those. Let me know if you've used any of those or some others. And you may ask, why do I need, why do I even need this? The reason we need this, as shown, it improves your understanding of a project. If you can, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. So if we can see something, and if we can see it in three dimensions, that even just helps it even more. Helps coordinate with other trades. If you're building a, a house and you're real good in carpentry, but you still need plumbers, electricians, uh, finishers, carpet makers, uh, not carpet maker, but carpet layers, sheetrock people. You got all these different parts that need to come together and you could almost make those in different, what they call layers. Same thing as like in PowerPoint to so that people could see the progression of the project. Uh, my third point, more information is just more success for the project. Helps you meet the objectives. It's fun, and it uh, it's just another arrow in your quiver. Now, who would use these? I thought of you know engineers, architects, maintenance people. I had a thought this morning. Sculptors. They're always working on. 3D items like bust. So if you could see something from the front and the back and the side, that would just help transfer your image from your mind to someone else's mind. I believe that's all we have. Yes, that's all we have there. So we're going to pause and go live. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is just click on the image or click on the model, as they call it, and you'll see the 3D model ribbon come up. If you click on it, we're actually in home now. We're in the home ribbon. If you click on the 3D model, you'll see a new set of options. You can, well, let's just go ahead and do this. From this device, you'll see the items that we looked at earlier on the slide. If you go to stock 3D models, that's on, that's on, oh, in PowerPoint. It says online, but I think it's actually in PowerPoint. You have all these different options here. Lots of whatever the number was I gave you. Uh, let's, go, let's, look, let's look in medical real quick. Here's the heart that I saw earlier. And now it's going to override the image I already have selected. See the heart is beating. And I found this works better with a dual monitor. I want to show this, switch to a different camera, show a different, um, show a uh, dual monitor. And if I go to slideshow view, Move, move this out the way, just minimize it out of the way. You can, you'll, you'll see that you can do a lot more in dual monitor mode than you can in single monitor mode. But this is typical with any, any image here. And notice here we have more options where you can Go to a preset area, and you have a whole bunch of options you could look at. You could slice it. And we can open up the heart and see what you can enlarge it, of course. 
you can shrink it. And we can also have this thing in the background do something, which is supposed to be rotating. Now the heart is beating. Let's go back with the heart that we selected. You can pause it. We can restart it. You can see the heart beating over here. Click again and the second object will rotate. Go back to edit mode. We can enlarge this like we can any object. Change the angle of it. And in single screen mode, I found it's a little difficult to change the image of the model because it wants PowerPoint wants to advance to the next slide. So essentially, you'd have to have a one slide slideshow of your 3D model if you're really going to get into a lot of detail work on um, your 3D model. Click on a 3D model. 3D model option comes up. You have all these different animations that you can select on. You can also control it manually with uh, pan, and pan and zoom, or you can rotate it yourself, and then the slideshow will adjust accordingly. And to go back to my notes, uh, there's a service called Remix that is supported by PowerPoint, another 3D service. I have some notes here to use the morph transition that we talked about the 3D models to see how that's going to change the appearance of what it is you're working with. So just be aware the movements can be distractful, but they're very um, powerful. So let the audience grab it, soak it in before you get into a lot of detail. Another option you have that we've talked about in a previous slide is renaming these objects if you want to if, if you want to um, give them a, a, a label something other than X Y Z one two three go to the selection pane so we have the heart selected so you could just I think yeah you can just single click delete all that and call this heart so now you'll know that this is the heart. Um, so this is 3D model 3, we could call this the cone if we wanted to. So you could quickly see what's going on. Okay, content placeholder 2 is this box, title 1 is the title, and text box 4 is the one I added here. So it just helps manage the models or images without a whole lot of going back and forth. Also, I have a note here that to look at the show all or hide all, notice all the objects went away. If you click the, okay, the eye will turn an object on or off. And the heart will lock, I mean, not the heart, the lock will lock the position of that particular object wherever it's located so i cannot move it i can move this one but i can't move that one because it's locked it also prevents it from being resized uh, also note the different changes on the animation pane for these 3d models i'm currently using I think swing. You can click on it, click on this drop down and see a few more items. You can also, of course, select your options, which way you want to rotate, how you want to rotate, 
Soto moderately or strong. All these different options you have. And you have the standard animation controls that you're familiar with. I have notes here saying that there are 11 effect options. There's more than that. 3, 6, 12, 14 on this particular one. I guess the number could vary depending on which one you select. And as we've already shown, you can have objects moving together or sequentially, just depending on how you set it up in your animation pane that we've already talked about on a previous video. So this feature would be really good if you had a AutoCAD, and CAD is computer-aided drafting. If you had an AutoCAD drawing of your house that you want to add an addition on, you could add, have them put the addition on there and you could see it from all three sides. You could see it from underneath, which probably wouldn't be a whole lot other than the foundation. You could have a layer for the wiring, a, a layer for the plumbing, a layer for lights, a layer for internet and cable and other things. And you could see it all in one, on one slide, basically. And we already talked about images that can be found uh, free and on the internet web. The last item I want to show you was from Windows. So if you go to Start Menu, go to 3D Viewer, Here's our B that we had earlier. This is how you can rotate it, make it pan tilt. You have various commands up here. Here's where I exported it for the PowerPoint. Here's where you can export the image and print it. Copy, paste, you can see the Options, I don't have to read up to you. Let me change the, change the uh, dynamics of the image. Also, you may hear the fan running. This is an older i5 computer. This 3D modeling is very intensive on the on the um, CPU, so just be cognizant that you may get some noise depending on age of your computer. And you have various options here that do different things. Notice the, how the wings are changing shapes, or oh, even even the uh, the body of the the bee. I think you can resize it some kind of way. There's lots of options here. And there's more on shading here. I think this is dealing with angles. Yes. You see the three dimensional cube up here. And there's presets. And you can make it go quickly some direction. Let's see if there's a resize. Hmm. I'm surprised you can't make it bigger or smaller. Oh, it's probably this option here. Nope, that didn't do it either. So you can export that, put it in PowerPoint, control it the way we're controlling it here. I have another note here that says, note the options with a right click and edit. Or maybe that's in PowerPoint. You can pause, view. Oh, that was from the PowerPoint. You can pause, view, pan and zoom and add a comment. So the question I have for the viewing audience is, will the iPhone shoot in 3D? I was playing on my 
galaxy and it would record a photo or transform a photo into what they call 3D. But once I brought it in the PowerPoint, it really wasn't 3D. It was just a, it was just a 2D picture that they had kind of souped up. So will the iPhone record in 3D? So that's about it for 3D models or 3D objects. It's almost like a science in itself. We've talked about being aware of your audience in case people have autism or epilepsy or you don't want to make them crazy. We've talked about some free and for purchase models you can get on the web. We've talked about a real estate model that would be fun to play with. There's options. There's two options on Windows. There's one in Windows. There's one in PowerPoint to get models. And there's also a system in uh, the Mac OS operating system. I suggest you use the Morph transition, see what that looks like. We've talked about the different ribbons, that uh, the different ribbon that comes up under the, the 3D model concept. And we've given you some examples, showed you how to rename the objects so that you can figure out which one is which using the select pane. So let me know how you you have used this. If you have, I have not really used it in my career, but I could see how it could be very beneficial for someone with a, a semi-complex project where they wanted to show all three sides at the same time and zoom in, zoom out, rotate, enlarge, et cetera, et cetera. So love to hear from you. Have a good time with this, and we'll catch you on the next video.